Hi, welcome to our channel. We're the Simple Teachers. Are you a little scared, a little nervous, or just don't know how to get started with your progress monitoring? Well, today's video is going to show you just how to get started. Take the plunge, get started with your progress monitoring. If you haven't watched our prior video of what progress monitoring is, we want you to love it because it's so valuable. Go watch that video, I'll put the link below. Check that out because you'll need to understand what it is and why we use it before you really start using it. Yeah, we're gonna show you, we, we talked about what it is and why. Mm -hmm. We're gonna show you, let's get it going now. We ready? Okay, right. here let's we go. Do it. Here is how you get started. We have a fake student named Brooks Thompson. And this student came in at the beginning of the year in second grade reading 16 words a minute with 73% accuracy. This line, this circle and this circle are our beginning of year benchmark and end of year benchmark which we also list right there and right there. Middle of year is listed right here, but we do not put that right there. So with this student, she is in the red. And so we need to make sure we're progress monitoring her once a week. Yep, our reds we wanna get every week. Our yellow kids are less intense, our strategic kids twice a month. And then our benchmark kids monthly. And sometimes uh, those benchmark kids, we may choose to do them more or less frequently, depending on, I, I like to call them, what type of benchmark kid they are. Yeah. Some kids are so darn fluent. Yeah. It's like, that's not what you're measuring anymore. Yep. Yep. They don't need to be measured yep. in that. So after you know the beginning of year benchmark, then we need to plot their realistic growth line and their ambitious growth line. So I need to first mark where they came in at the beginning of the year. So I'm gonna just put a little dot where 16 would roughly be. And then I need to mark where their realistic growth and their ambitious growth will be. Now I need to use some math, but in this paper, we've given you a nice little help. So it says 1.5 words per minute growth per week. That's realistic growth. And then you can change this number, but we kind of averaged out about 35 weeks in a school year. So in about 35 weeks in a school year, they'll be able to grow about 52.5 words per minute over the year. So all you need to do, because we've done that little bit of math for you, is add that 52.5 with that 16 their initial beginning of the year words per minute rate. So 52.5 plus 16 is 68.5. So that's a realistic growth for this student. Ambitious growth would be growing two words uh, per minute per week times by the 35 weeks would be 70 words per minute growth. So when I add that to their original 16, that now becomes 86 by the end of the year. So then I can plot little dots for the 86 and that 68.5. I wanna just show where we got those ambitious and realistic growth numbers from. We have those listed here in our Dibbles pack and these come from research. We didn't make them up. So these come from research. Uh, a lot has been done to determine what the expected and ambitious growth rates are for students in the different grades. So you can feel good about putting those numbers to use in your data points. Um, you feel like if you have students that are not making those goals, then there's probably something that you can maybe look to either your instruction or to your interventions to see what can be done to meet those goals. Yeah. So the good thing about those are at the beginning of the year for second grade, 52 is the norm. By end of year, 87 is that benchmark, the benchmarks. 
And that is not as quick as a growth rate as what research has shown. So if they come below that 52, it is very possible for them to make that end of year. Now, this student is going to be so darn close, so close if we make that ambitious. So yeah. that brings some good news to us. Yeah. So that's great. Okay, so we're going to now get our ruler out, and we're going to just draw some lines. So I'm going to take that beginning of year to the realistic end data point, and I just kind of connect the dots. Draw a line, and then I do the same thing for ambitious. I'm just aiming for right in the middle of both of those dots, and there we have it. So when, when we're plotting her data, we want her data points to be within those points. We're going to now pretend that this student we're progress monitoring. So we've chosen just some pretend data points and these are real, meaning we've seen these data points happen in students. So here we go. All right, so you're progress monitoring this child every week because she's read um, intense. And while she's writing these in, I wanna talk a little bit about the different passages of Dibbles. So they group those passages <clears throat> in groups of three, and they're gonna have an easy, medium, and hard, meaning one that's kind of beginning of the year, one that's kind of middle of the year, one that's kind of end of year, reading level. So you're going to see the data points go up and down. And the reason it's important not to skip any of the passages and to use them all is it gives us yet another kind of look or dose of reality. You'll get to know me a little bit. I like reality. Keeps me on track. So we get a, a little glimpse at how are we doing at some of those harder passages, the end of year level passages. And so Dibbles has put those in about every three, you're gonna have a middle and, and beginning year level passage. So that's why those data points really kind of go up and down and up and down and up and down. Don't be scared of that. It gives good topic, talking points for your students. After you finish assessing, you can say, oh wow, look, you, you made a lot of growth on that one. Here's a couple of things you did well. Or if they went down, you could talk about some of the words they struggled with or, oh, let's go back and let's decode this word together or let's reread this sentence. We had a hard time with it. You can do a little, just to take a moment after the assessment's done. Okay, now you have those in. Great. So this, ha this will happen to you. You'll have all of a sudden, whoa, a big growth, and then they dip back down. I mean, that's normal oh, yeah. because of what Angie just talked about. Oh, yeah, very normal. The thing that we want to watch for that isn't normal is if we have three downward in a row. If we have three downward in a row, that's when we want to make a change in our intervention or our instruction. So we're going to keep gathering those data points every single week so we can watch for those downward trends mm -hmm. and do something about them in a timely manner. Yeah, so let's say November, let's say this student is like 28 and then maybe 25 and then maybe 22. Oh, uh, ding, ding, ding. Yeah. I need to change something yep. in instruction for this student. Yep. Maybe get some diagnostic data, double check all of the interventions being given. I mean, you can. there's a lot you can look into to make changes. Great. All right, so progress monitoring, get it started, do the most intense kids every week, and keep track. You can make a chart for all your students if you want. Your higher kids, sometimes I even like to, instead of chart uh, the fluency, chart the, the retail or something different on a chart. Um, so you're still do, keeping track of something, but... Because you... It's highly possible you might have in second grade, some of your highest kids are up here yeah. and you can't even chart no, them. They're no. off the charts. Yeah. So that's not your focus no, anymore. No, it's not. Not at all. You just want to make sure they're not dropping. Yeah. So progress monitoring, get started. Don't be scared. It'll be your friend. You're going to like it. It's fast. Tells you a lot. 
and you'll keep track of those students that are most struggling, make sure that they don't have a downward trend or yeah. continue to struggle. We're going to make sure that they're making it, going to make it. Mm -hmm. So if this student, if you were to go on a couple more weeks and let's say there's two more data points that start going down, we need to change something. Something's yeah. not working. So it's a, it's a great way to catch instruction yep. problems before it, it deflates that student or before before they get too far behind yeah. or even further behind Ugh. exactly we got to catch them while we can totally yep thanks for watching this video if you have any questions about progress monitoring leave them in the comments we'll be happy to answer and don't forget to share this video with your friends use this as a team when you as a team come together it's it's awesome to look at data this way together so share it with your team. Like this video, subscribe, check us out on Instagram and Facebook, and we will catch you on another video. Thanks, Simply, Simply Teach. teach.